What would you do if you see or hear someone collapse who is not responsive? You know to call 911, but did you know that if you start continuous chest compressions, the new CPR without mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing, that you will double the person's chance of survival? Continuous chest compression CPR is a new technique that is easier to learn, easier to perform, and more effective than traditional CPR that recommended rescue breathing. And you do not need to be certified to perform this life-saving procedure. If you witness someone collapse from sudden cardiac arrest, taking prompt action could save their life by following these simple steps. First, place the person on his back on a hard surface. Check for responsiveness by shaking and shouting at the person or rubbing their chest bone hard with your knuckles. The person's clothing is not removed. Next, command someone to call 911. Call 911. Or make the call yourself. Then begin chest compressions. You aim for the center of the chest, usually between the nipples. You put the heel of one hand there. You put the heel of the other hand on top of there. And you lock your elbows. And the reason for that is that no one is strong enough to do a hundred compressions a minute. And then you put your shoulders immediately over the center of the chest and you fall, compressing it about two inches. It's important that the hands are lifted from the chest after each compression. Now that's because the recoil of the chest, that causes a little vacuum in the chest, causes air to go in and blood to come back. It's also important to pump on the chest fast at a rate of 100 times per minute. An easy way to maintain that beat is to think of a disco song like Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. It turns out that if you try to do 100 times a minute, even if you're not perfect, you have the best chance of getting the most flow. It is a jab, 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 rapid pumping action to move that blood forward to the brain. Dr. Gordon Avey and Dr. Carl Kern are the pioneers of continuous chest compression CPR. Both are cardiac researchers at the Sarver Heart Center in Tucson and professors at the University of Arizona College of Medicine. They explain with continuous chest compression CPR, you don't check for a pulse, clear the airway, or do mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing. All you do is pump on the chest. In cardiac arrest, the heart is actually fibrillating and not pumping any blood forward at all. So it's only when you press on the chest that you're squeezing the heart and making a heartbeat. So your chest compression, each chest compression, is their heartbeat. And if you stop for anything, blood flow to the brain stops. These chest compressions should be performed even if the victim is gasping. Gasping is a sign of cardiac arrest. And we have so many people that tell us, oh, my husband was snoring last night woke up this morning and he was gone. Uh, so that gasping is critically important. It's been reported to occur in 55% of cardiac arrests. And don't worry, this pumping action won't hurt the victim. They're dying, they're soon to be dead. And no matter what you do, you can't make them worse. Better to break a rib than to let somebody die. I think um, they'll all be sore, but they'll be happy to shake your hand and thank you. Studies show continuous chest compression CPR is more effective than traditional CPR for individuals who suffer sudden cardiac arrest. Dr. Kern explains why. I think there's really two major reasons. First is that more people will do it. It's simpler, it's easier to remember, and frankly, it's not so intimidating. And secondly, we learned that attempting the mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing is not without its own cost. Most lay people, in seriousness, cannot get the breaths in anyway. But isn't ventilation necessary to provide oxygen to the blood? If it's an adult who collapses by primary ventricular fibrillation, they typically have enough oxygen already in their body. It's a matter of circulating that oxygen to the tissues that need it. Most importantly, the brain and the heart, so you can respond to treatment. For every minute you delay CPR, the survival rate drops by nearly 10%. So if you wait five minutes, there's less than a 50% chance now of surviving. That's why it's critical to pump on the chest continuously without stopping until paramedics or medical assistants arrive. Of course, that can get tiring. So if another person is available, have them take a position on the opposite side of the patient so the two of you can alternate chest compressions. 
And remember, you do not have to be certified to provide this life-saving technique. Because of the Good Samaritan laws, you are not at legal risk. Every minute, someone dies from sudden cardiac arrest. It's the number one killer in the United States. It can happen to anyone, anytime, any place without warning. And your best chance for survival is if someone does continuous chest compression CPR. But it's very important to note that continuous chest compression CPR is not for infants or small children or for someone drowning. Here, the best approach is chest compression along with mouth-to-mouth -mouth ventilation. But even then, something is better than nothing. Continuous chest compression CPR may very well make you a lifesaver. For more information about continuous chest compression CPR, visit the Sarver Heart Center website at the University of Arizona or the State of Arizona SHARE website. This is Ann Peterson reporting.